Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. My name is Richard Betts and I'm joined by Nicole Dines, Paul Strom and Dan Ennis. Um, let's start with you, Dan. Uh, what have you been following this week? Big news on the retail market is, of course, that MAPIC is to go 100% digital. I think it really was the news everybody was expecting. And despite what I think everybody would acknowledge as being a pretty healthy raft of measures by MAPIC to try to make the event uh, come off in real life, I think they've taken the right decision uh, to shift to a 100% digital uh, format program. So now everybody's uh, attention shifts to what they can do and get involved with in November. And I already saw Mark Faithful, who obviously edits Mapic News. He's already sort of given a bit of a call to action for people to continue to send in their news about their projects and developments. So, uh, so really, you know, is this possibly uh, the future uh, for some of these events? Um, I hope not, because uh, I think in real life is really the, is really when the best networking and the best deals and the best conversations happen. But I do think that uh, being digital is, um, is really something which uh, we all have to embrace. And uh, elsewhere this week, uh, we saw that the NHS, which is, of course, the UK's health service, they've been exploring plans to occupy empty high street shops and units in shopping centres to deliver some quite critical services um, within the community, things like CT or MRI scans to patients. And that's something of a move where the NHS could become one of the high street or, or mal's biggest uh, tenants. Um, so, I mean, th this appeared in an article in The Guardian. The proposals were intended to speed up the process for patients waiting for scans, but they want to reduce the travel time as well. And, the, and obviously the risk and obviously mitigate the risk of catching COVID through visiting hospitals. And these kind of one stop shops, um, they'd be open six days a week, providing simple things like blood tests, lung function checks and even endoscopies. Those proposals were signed off by NHS England, uh, their governing board. They were signed off last week already. Um, so they're set to be rolled out. They did say that they would need extra capital funding. So we might even see some public private uh, partnerships um, coming along there. But certainly, um, you know, the, the, the shift to, uh, to, to use space in alternative ways uh, is something that we've obviously been following here for quite some time. Uh, but doing these things sort of in the community, I think, is the real key. Um, and retail operators like Capital and Regional who emphasise community within their brand values are going to benefit from the move by NHS. End of last week, obviously, we saw Property Week and EG uh, both ran with some of the interesting changes we've been seeing to the diversity and spread of new chief executives at the top of some of the best known property companies around. Obviously, um, we've had quite a lot of change and Sam McClary particularly covers that. People like Simon Carter at British Land, Mark Allen, at Landsec, you know, we've uh, seen Dan Labad at Crown Estate, James Rayner at Grosvenor, um, and of course, this week's um, sort of high profile appointment of Rita Rose Gagne at Hammerson. So, yeah, very interesting week in real estate. I mean, I had an interesting discussion about that repurposing, picking up on the NHS point there, um, just about. Um, where you've got retail beginning to move into offices, but also because of the increase in, in home working, that we may also then begin to see office locations beginning to move into some of those urban, suburban retail centres. Um, and interesting also to see um, MAPIC moving online and, and embracing fully digital. Um, I agree with you, we're all looking forward to physical events coming back. But I think rather like there's a number of interviews, conversations, meetings that will be done virtually going forward. I think that the same will be true also for some of the exhibitions where it works, um, that actually virtual will become an addition, I think. But Paul, I, I know you'd been, you'd been looking particularly at some of that repurposing, but also um, picking up on, on Dan's point there on, on the, uh, the Hammerson story. Yes, that's right. Rita Rose Gagne's uh, appointment as CEO at Hammerson's. I thought it was interesting for a few reasons, really. Not least that they've gone not just outside the company to recruit, but outside the country. And that contrasts with, say, British Land's appointment of Simon Carter, their CFO, into the into the hot seat to replace Chris Grigg. Being French-Canadian will obviously do no harm with Hammerson's French subsidiary. Obviously, it's a challenging time to be joining Hammerson. Their shares currently trade at uh, around 16p, and in 2018, they were over £5.70. She's a lawyer with an MBA from McGill HEC Montreal. She was most recently 
president of growth markets at uh, Ivanhoe, Cambridge, which is wholly owned by Case de Depot de Placement du Québec, a bit major Canadian institution. Um, she had responsibility there for some uh, $7.6 billion worth of uh, real estate assets across Asia Pacific and Latin America. Interesting too, because Ivanhoe Cambridge is, does own some large shopping centres, but it's got a very mixed portfolio and is very much more internationally diverse than that of Hamilton. So it'd be interesting to see which way that goes. One of Ivanhoe Cambridge's recent ventures uh, was in, uh, in April, it announced a new joint 800 million US dollar venture with Barinvest and a Middle Eastern investor to provide logistics facilities in China. So um, lots to follow there. In terms of logistics this week, we saw also um, Segro announcing that it's to develop a, a subterranean logistics facility in the heart of Harris. It's 75,000 square meters at the Gobelin railway station in the 13th arrondissement. And that's a joint scheme with developer ICAD, which is going to develop office space above. Uh, it was interesting. Mm-hmm. That's interesting because just about a week before Real X Global, Sean Cooley gave a keynote, and in that suggested that underground car parks would be a useful source of last mile logistics space. Logistics has really been a, the, well the flavour of the year, I suppose. But um, this week also, Bauer Invest again announced that it was in a tie up with Clarion Partners Europe to invest 300 million euros in logistics across Europe. And also this week, uh, the industrial property giant GLP, which was the company that took over Gaisley as its European division, closed a pan-European logistics fund um, at 1.1 billion. The logistics space has really been a huge focus of, of this year. I did an interview with Sean Cooley as well earlier on in the year, um, particularly talking about repurposing. Um, and he was also mentioning in Victorian France that there were already these systems which allowed parcels to be sent underground. And so maybe this whole subterranean element will come back again. Nicole, what have, what have you been following? Well, last week we were talking about the blurring of boundaries between infrastructure and real estate. And this week there was an interesting deal that sort of uh, goes in that, uh, in that direction. And it's in Trieste, which is the northernmost port on the Adriatic in Italy. And um, Hamburg Hafen, which is the Hamburg port operator, has taken a majority stake in the project to create this called the logistics platform at the port. And what's interesting is that it's very much been presented as a European project rather than Chinese. The Chinese were bidding for it, but lost out to, to Hamburg. And the project already has capital from various European countries, Denmark, Turkey, uh, Switzerland and Hungary. And uh, the president of the Port Authority of Trieste actually, when, when announcing the deal, said that this is the Silk Road does not end uh, with, uh, with the Chinese Silk and, and uh, the, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. The Silk Road continues down to Trieste. So an interesting take on, 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 on a sort of European uh, project. Another thing on a very different subject that I came across this week was um, UBS came out with their global real estate bubble index, very much a red alarm bell flashing, uh, saying that our five European cities, particularly they pointed out Munich and Frankfurt are at the top at the most at risk where uh, real estate prices have, have gone up throughout the pandemic to unsustainable levels and they expect a sharp correction soon. And the other three European cities at risk, according to UBS, are Amsterdam, Paris and, and Zurich. That's interesting because obviously that, that residential and, and everything around living has been one of the, the kind of sectors that has been um, very much the, the focus during the last kind of nine months. Thanks very much, Nicole. Thank you, Dan and Paul. Thank you for joining us um, and look forward to seeing you next week for our regular roundup of the key themes in real assets. Thank you. Thank you.